Yeah. <laughs> you uh, we can start if you're ready to start. Roll tape, please. Okay, when we roll tape, we have to we're, we're roll tape. So this is for room. real, we're rolling? Yeah, you want to take Yeah, I do. I want to just run in there you and go and make sure that's okay. the knee. It's okay. But you've already slipped okay. in my jacket. <laughs> um, yeah. Mike. <laughs> we got speed. Oh. We got speed. Stevie, you ready? Yep, I guess so. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Um, we got, are you picking up talk in the background, Bill? Are you okay? Uh, you must be quiet. I just have Okay. Your new solo album, Rock a Little. What can you tell me about it? Well, um, <laughs> uh, what can I tell you about Rock a Little? I wish I could tell you more about Rock a Little than there's time to tell you. Um, it started about over a year ago and for many reasons, all different kind of strange reasons wound up into one, uh, it wasn't right. It was right, but there was something, you know, like you had the wrong pair of shoes or something, it was wrong. And so, and I knew it wasn't right, and I didn't know why. So I just sort of kind of wandered through this year and a half of trying to understand why I didn't feel that it was right. And I finally kind of understand now why it wasn't, which isn't something I can really tell you now. But it is right now. And it is rocking a little, which rock a little, if you don't know what that means, it means that we kind of rock a little all our life. We rock, I did, I rocked in my cradle for sure. And uh, then in midlife you sort of rock on your feet and then you move on words to a rocking chair at some point probably. So that's kind of what rock a little means. It means to rock and roll all your life. And this album being the meaning of it, being to, uh, to rock and roll all your life, to have that kind of attitude and to kind of stay forever young in your own way. Um, it's a very important statement for me. And I really had to make sure that it was right for the people that like my music, because they would know that it wasn't right. So. That's really pretty, the cradle to the rocking chair concept. That's really beautiful. Is there a song called Rock oh, yeah. yeah. The song, amazingly enough, of course, in all the uh, lots of songs that we've recorded from a year ago, um, is, a, is a song that I'm kind of sharing with my father because it's, uh, it came from, um, from my dad and from uh, my friend Rebecca saying to me, you know, we don't care how you feel, you have to go up there and do a show now. And so, People, call, people in my, my other everyday funny life call me Lily. And uh, so my dad would say, go ahead, Lily. Hit it, rock a little, hit the stage, get up. If you don't feel good, go home. And Rebecca would say the same thing. And uh, so this whole thing kind of came about as a statement to really, it doesn't really matter what your problems are, Stevie, or what is going through your life right now. What really matters is that you have to get up and go out there on stage. And that's what you live for. So go ahead and do that now. And so that's this whole rock. It says, uh, there's this one part that it's about my, my dad. It says, uh, he knows his daughter. They say, where does she live? He says, oh, up there somewhere. And then he says, go ahead, Lily. Hit it. Hit the stage. And that's kind of, you know, that's kind of what my life is. So I had to make really a lot of changes and stops and understand what was going on in my life that was other people influencing me and talking to me and making me feel certain ways that, that maybe I let my own self go a little bit and not, you know, really re rely on my own intuitions, which are always the best ones for me. Mm -hmm. And I'm always right. So to not believe in myself, I think, was the, was the thing that I did that was the wrong thing. I didn't believe in myself for a few few days, few minutes, few lifetimes went by. And now I know that it really was all okay. And so I'm really excited. I'm really excited. I want this album to go out because I've been listening to it for so long that I'm really ready to start another record, you know. But it's no wonder, I know your fans feel like they know you really well. And the kind of lyrics you write, like the ones about your dad, it's no wonder they feel like that. Yeah. They do know me pretty well. Does this record include the material you recorded at church in Dallas? 
in church. I had heard you recorded in the church. church. Um, yeah, oh sure. This is, um, we went, <laughs> see this was one of my bad planning moves. I moved everybody I knew to Dallas to record with really very little preparation. I had, I prepared. I mean, I wrote the song, I had the songs written, but, but all the like rock and roll stars arrived unprepared. And uh, Jimmy Ivey and I put him in a very weird position. You know, he had to kind of go in there and say, well, I haven't really heard the songs either, but we're gonna play. And so we were there for about a month and we ended up coming out with about six tracks. And so, I mean, we'll actually even probably more than six but about six that we can go back to and uh, that are very, that are really good. I mean, it's like, you know, it's all, been, what I said before, it's all, it's all been really good and the people have been really good and all the energy that's gone into it, which is a lot of different, you know, Jimmy Iovine's en energy, Keith Olsen's energy, Stevie's here and there energy, um, a lot of different people that play, the girls that sing on the record, all my friends, you know, my backup recording group in, in Phoenix, you know, that <laughs> nobody ever knew how to record anything until I moved there. And it's like, you know, I have to record, so you have to learn. So I've been, I've been really, you know, crocheting this thing now for really a long time, and it is going to be when it finally is out, which is, I hope, very, very soon, it is going to be a real tapestry of energy from a lot of different really brilliant and really the people that I very much respect mm -hmm. woven into this pattern that I hope everyone will understand. The sound of the church must have been spectacular. Fun to sing yeah. in there? Yeah. Well, we got probably six or eight tracks there, so yeah. And that was only in a week because the rock and roll stars arrived and left in a week. <laughs> So it was, you know, that was it. It was, they were all kind of tracked live. Is it too soon to think about a video yet? Have you thought about it at all? Well, every time I write a song or every time we record one, I <laughs> completely, I think about the video to it, you know. Um, I don't know. I mean, really, in all seriousness, honestly, you'd have to sit down yourself and listen and tell me what you think would be the single because there's a lot of real different kind of songs that all could could go that way, and then that would be a video, you know, because whatever is your single is your video. Sometimes I don't think that's really the best way, but it is for now, I guess. How about the tour? Are you going to try some different places this time? Well, we've played just about every place mm -hmm. you can possibly play. Um, I'm going to go to Europe, of course. I've been wanting, I mean, I just want to go, mm -hmm. really, like today. Um, I'll probably do the United States. I'll, see, I have to wait. When the record comes out, then it's like from the day I hand the, it to them, they, uh, they have about two months, or that's about what it takes, until I can really leave this town to go on, on the road. Mm -hmm. Because if you go too early, you're kind of, um, I don't know what the word for it is, you're defeating yourself because it's too early. And so it, it's better to wait. So that means that I have to hurry and get this out so that I can go. And so I, I have a feeling that probably maybe, maybe I'll go to Europe first. I don't want to go to Europe first. I'd like to go to the United States first before I go there. But it'll depend on you know the time schedule, and I don't want to sit around and do nothing oh. for two months after my record comes out. I'll go crazy. You must be dying to get out in the road. I, yeah, I mean, I, that would be really hard for me. So clubs, clubs. <laughs> do you ever get to do that anymore? And I wish. I would like to. I suppose it would be possible to pull it off, huh? <laughs> weddings, anything. Yeah. I was just saying to you before, it's been a really unusual year for women in rock and roll. You've been doing it a long time, but there's never been a surge like this. What do you think happened this year? Well, I think girls got lucky. In a man's world, I think girls got real lucky. And if the stars are with us all right now, everybody should really jump on it because it's hard, you know, it's hard. I'm really, I'm really lucky because I, I had the amazing luck to be in a duet with a man so he could talk and get us there and then go to a, a established big time rock and roll band like Fleetwood Mac and just be in it all of a sudden. I mean, my life changed. The first concert, mm -hmm. the next day, my life changed. I didn't have to, you know, to just be Stevie Nicks and be starting to do this 
and have to go through what um, all the, the girls that are doing it now, I really admire them because I didn't have my feelings hurt too many times, by outsiders at least, you know. I kind of kept my hurt feelings on the inside. And the outside people didn't get to me. Mm -hmm. And that's really, you know, at least you can, you can understand friends and the things that they do and say that maybe don't make your life really wonderful, but it's hard when people from the outside come in and tell you they don't like your songs, they don't like your look, they don't like what you do, they don't, you know, you should go into another business. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard for you to say, well, you know, for me, I'll just sit around and wait for a huge rock and roll band to ask me to join them that already has a lady in it. I mean, yeah. the odds of this happening are not that the odds don't exist, you know. So I'm really lucky. In past interviews, you had said in the beginning you were almost considered the little sister in Fleetwood Mac and that it was hard for you to get considered seriously as a solo artist. Do you think that was the times, the 70s? No, Fleetwood Mac would be exactly the same today. I mean, yeah. I'm still that. But see, once again, now that I'm so, <laughs> in my ancient ways, now I know that I was very lucky to be the baby sister. You know, yeah, I'll let Christine take all those hard knocks for me. She did. I didn't have to, you know, I mean, they kept a lot of that bad stuff that happens away from me. And so I didn't have to have my dreams kind of crashed and ruined, which happens here in this town, you know, because I was really protected talking to Pat Benatar earlier today and she said early on in her career a record company executive said to her you don't think they're coming to hear you sing some of your own record company you know it's a see nobody ever said that to me because I was really protected hmm. you think it'd be any different if you're starting out today I don't know if uh, I don't know if my fantasy dreams that I have to continue to believe in and write about and send out to my own particular precious audience would be able to hang in there as strong as if I started out today. Once again, I was lucky to skim through nine or ten years of, of a hard road without having to see too much. What kind of influence do you think you've had on today's artists? I don't know. I hope a good influence. I hope, you know, if anything, I wouldn't really expect anybody to say too much about my music or my, my songs or my singing, but I would expect people to say she had energy, that, you know, oh, yeah. that from her energy we, we can learn something. I think it's possible, not only musically, um, you have a very strong image as well. I think the way you dress, the lace, I think that may have contributed to people like Prince and Madonna, the current look that's so popular. I do. No, Madonna gets out of this easy. Prince does not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I think so. I definitely think that I have definitely um, influenced, uh, influenced the clothes of a few people, yes. What do you think of Cindy Lauper? I think that she's uh, wonderful for being strong and doing what she wants to do. I think that getting in a little garbage can and going up over the audience <laughs> is so brave, I can't stand it. Um, <laughs> and I think that having her parents in her videos is really wonderful and bringing them into it, you know, she brings her family into it. Um, you really, once again, have to have to really depend on your rocks of Gibraltar to exist in this business. Mm -hmm. And I think that she seems to have a really good stronghold behind her. And that's what will make Cindy strong and it will make her last. If she lasts, it will make her last because she has that. You can't do it alone. It's just too easy to, to get disenchanted. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to put orange in your hair anymore because you're disenchanted. So as long as you have some people around you that are good to tell you that they love your orange hair, that you'll be all right. How about Tina Turner? From the stories that I heard of Tina's life before, when it was Ike and Tina Turner, I think that she is also an amazing woman to have come this far and still, still do this, and still do it so well. You know, and Tina doesn't care about anybody else. It's like, you know, I'm not, there's not anybody in this room that is going to ever make Tina Turner jealous because
Tina is within herself strong, or she wouldn't be here and she wouldn't be doing this now. I think we've pretty much covered the whole women thing. Is there anything, any other feelings you have about it that I haven't asked you directly about? Um, No, I think you've done a fantastic job, actually. Okay. I Thank just you very much. All right. Ivan will change it. Be quiet, everybody. We have speed? We were just talking not only about the other women who are your peers in rock and roll, but also the ones you work with all the time. Tell me about your women backup singers. And I was just telling you yeah. that while I was getting ready, that I just had a flash of you saying to me, what do you think about the other women in rock and roll? And that my only really answer could be, I don't know them. And I, I only know the ones that I work with. And the ones that I work with being da, da, da. Lori Perry and uh, Sharon Silani and Minnie. Minnie, I don't even know what Minnie's last name is. <laughs> Minnie is Minnie. Um, they, you know, make my life so much easier. You know, if I get a little tired and drop out, they pick it up for me. If I, you know, if I want somebody to sing a great harmony, they throw it in. If I don't want to go out and sing alone when I'm recording, then I just, then one of them goes with me and just kind of quietly, subtly sings along and smiles and like, you know, acts happy. And it's like, I, I have to have people around me that love to sing and work. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I feel like Alice in Wonderland because I don't relate to anybody and nobody relates to me because it's like, yeah, I want to stay later than everybody else at the recording studio. And I do every night want to stay later. And everybody is like, you know, I mean, people are burdened. They, they, they need to go home and sleep, you know, and I don't understand go home and sleep. So yeah. I want to stay. And the girls, you know, they back me up. And they'll stay, even though they also want to go home and sleep. They'll stay because they know that maybe I'll write that special song or maybe that really special emotional thing that, that we wanted to get on tape will be gotten mm -hmm. for the rest of our lives. And we all kind of feel that it's a rest of our lives proposition that we're talking about here, that we'll still all be rocking a little when we're really old. And that'll be one thing that we can kind of carry with us, you know. So I think that women in rock and roll should just go right ahead and do it because if you can make it, there's nothing like it. People always say that women are too competitive to be friends. You don't believe that's don't true? So. See, I'm not jealous of my background singers. They can't do anything that's going to make me jealous. <laughs> well, let's see. Um, you know, they can't really, unless I am really, like I said about, about Cindy or about Tina, unless I am unsure of myself. And that when that happens, then good, I hope somebody lets me know by making me ever so slightly jealous. You know, like, hmm, I don't think I want her to sing that anymore, you know, because she's just too good. Well, that keeps me on my toes. I better be better, or I'll be off the stage, you know. And if I even think that somebody is getting close, then I start to run. So it works for me, you know. If I just was just me in this man's world, then I don't know, you know, if I would be as ambitious and as strong mm -hmm. because I've got them beat because I just have to be me and sing my songs and do a good job and not take a long time and not cost a lot of money. With my girlfriends, they have to say, well, no, we didn't think you sang that very well. We think you could do that really better where, you know, one of the guys would say, well, it's all right, let's go. So it's a real check and balance for me. I like that. Excuse me, Bill, I'm here in radio. Are you picking that up on I'm the headset? In the back. Yeah, can we? You know. Okay. We have speed? Ready to go again? I want to talk... You have many other talents and interests, I know, and I want to talk about some of them. With uh, the record and everything going on, have you had time to keep up with your painting and your drawing? Well, you know, I never have, I never have time to keep up with my painting or my writing or anything, so, but I make the time. So, yeah, yeah, I do. 
Do you want to see all my paintings? <laughs> I've, you know, I've never seen anything. You've never seen any of my paintings? Oh, well, summon Sister Honey. <laughs> She's upstairs. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, drawing has kind of become a, uh, a sanity hold for me because I can sit in a group of a bunch of people and I can draw and be very involved but not fidgety because I'm doing something. Yeah, the physical energy. And I feel very unworthwhile when I'm just sitting. So I have like a lot of difficulty resting. So this keeps me still because I, you know, you just can't be getting up and leaving your drawing all the time and you don't want to because you're kind of compelled to work on it. And uh, so it's been a real gift for me that, that mm -hmm. I do this. And I always, you know, if I go for a while and I don't do a drawing, I think, is it gone? Am I not going to be able to draw the next time I pick up a pencil? And it isn't, it's never gone. And it just appeared three years ago, this drawing thing, because I've never drawn ever in my life. And I've never mm -hmm. taken an art class or, for that matter, a music class either. Um, and I just learned to draw overnight. It seems overnight. Hmm. And that's good because I certainly didn't want to study it. And I certainly don't mm -hmm. want to study it now. So, it, you know, this kind of uh, allows me... I kind of, when I decide to do something, I decide I'm going to do it really well quickly so that I can see if I like it, you know, because I'm not going to be able to understand on a low level whether I like it or not. So if I draw like a terrible drawing, I'm not going to be able to say, see the potential there for five years, you're going to be able to draw a really nice drawing. I can't do that. Yeah. So I have to like draw a really good drawing right away. And then I can go on and actually people can even sneak a little, you know, little knowledge, learning of, of art in if they very subtly kind of pass it over my head. It's really, it's, it's the kind of strangest thing in my whole life that's ever happened, my painting. I thought you always, I assumed you were mm -mm. a little child drawing. No, this no, is no. new. Mm -mm. Huh. Does it come from a different place than your music? No. No, I'm sure same. it comes right from the same place as my music. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, Uh, unlike a song, a drawing, the reason I started to draw really, I know why, I just don't know how, I, was when my friend was sick, got sick, and I wanted to leave something there with her, so that, because I couldn't be there all the time, so I wanted her to have something that was mine, that meant something. And when you paint or draw something, you carry it around with you for days or months or years or whatever, and um, like if you have a little, you know, a little dog or a cat or something, they'll, they'll seek out that painting to sleep on because it so has your essence in it. And uh, so I started to draw so that I could pin something up on her wall. And be with her. And be with her, yeah. And knowing that this wasn't a letter that I just jotted out or, or again, even a song or a piece of writing, but, a, but an image that would constantly occur when she looked at that that would say she's here. You also have a book coming out with some of your writing? That. What's in yes. it? Well, we should get the book, too. That's in the background. Do you want to bring... You can have me, sister, honey. Well, I don't know. I mean, here we are on camera, so, I mean, I don't want to... You can look at it yourself and Just then see. Just describe it and we'll shoot it. Well, can you see her? Sure, go ahead. She's... Um, there's a song called Sister Honey. That's uh, that I wrote here in this room in the last two months with uh, a man whose name is Les Dudek, who's a guitar player. Sure, I know and uh, he and I wrote this song called Sister Honey. And right when I, we were writing it, I started drawing Sister Honey. So Sister kind of came out of this song, and I did her right here. You know, I mean, even when it was dark, I would just kind of zero in on throwing color on and mushing it around. And then I go up to the light for a little while and work on her. And, and she just come, she just grew. She just became a person. Hold it there for a second. It's a perfect tilt. No glare. Well, the gold ink is really bad. People don't use Try the gold. Tilt you know. the back a bit where it was. There. there you go. We're just grabbing a cutaway of it. You really can draw. And you couldn't do this before, huh? No. Not, not ever. I mean, my mother will tell you. And all the stuff that she's got here, 300 boxes of stuff from her life, 
there's not a drawing in it or any even anything that alluded to doing anything in the art field at all. Okay. But this is only one thing. I mean, I have bunches of things. I have many, many, many paintings. And I don't really, this is, she's as finished as anything that I finish in two months. Because I usually get to a point where I don't want to, I don't want to take a chance of, you know, you can go too far on the drawing too. You can ruin it. In one fell swoop of your hand, you can ruin it. So you have to learn to get back and leave it alone for a while. Make sure that you don't want to change something, like erase the eyes or something, you know. And, Suddenly, your picture is gone. So I'm, I'm. That it's a definite uh, teaching lesson in discipline. Oh, yeah. Okay. Just getting focus on you because we have been on the painting. Okay. So your book, what's it called? The book is called The Wild Heart, and uh, the book is really, we call it the book. It's. Uh, it's a lot of poetry, it's some journalistic stuff, it's a lot of the actual nights of recording of the Wild Heart and the experiences that happened during that two, three year period. Um, there's some things from the, my Fleetwood Mac stash of ten years of writing. Uh, that, that part of it, that the real essence of that isn't in this book because that's a book in itself unto its own soul <laughs> that I don't have the time to do yet. Um, it's thick, this book, it's like really thick, and it's, uh, it's my life, and it's very honest. The names have been changed, but it's, it's very honest, and it's, I think it's, uh, I think people will really, and I think if you like my work, you will like this, because it's got a lot of, uh, it has a lot of advice and a lot of uh, philosophy in it that either did or didn't work for me. And so it's there on the paper to tell you that it did or did not work. And then make your choice and go on. So that's really what it's for. It's my uh, kind of little way of, besides just singing, to talk to the people that I play for and sing for and give them a little bit more of me. You excited about it coming I'm out? I'm very excited about it. I'm excited about them. I'm excited about them getting it. I'm not excited about me putting it out. I'm excited about them receiving it, you know. I just, I've never met you. I'm curious about what you're like, what you do in your free time besides your work and recording. What kind of, what do you do? That's all I do. Yeah. I've been up every night for the last two months, just about. Finishing off uh, four songs that I wanted to play for Jimmy and I wanted to make sure they were really perfect before I played them for him. And uh, so I've pretty much danced down the stages of the world through the last two months to get these things together so that I could stop and finish this record. Uh, I also did, did this painting, and I also have the book in the other room, you know, that I'm supposed to be editing and going through because I have like another huge this pile of, of writing that I have to go through to make sure that there isn't anything in there that I want in this particular book. So I really have no time to do anything except this. And that's why it's really important to me to get this record out so that everybody doesn't think I've just been lazing around for the last year and a half because I have, you know, I haven't stopped. And when I, when I do get this done, I think I'm probably going to like have to go on a, take a week's vacation because it's been like a long, it's a long time to work on, on a record, on a, on a statement of music, you know, this big, to work that long and hard on it and try to understand what is the best to give to the people out of all these things. So my time is not my time, really. Change of subject. What do you think about love? I think it's great if you can find it. Um, I found it. I know what it is. I know I can't ever settle for anything less than what love is. Yeah. And you're right, once you found it. You can never go back. 
we've talked a lot about um, you as a solo artist. What is happening to Fleetwood Mac? Are you going to join them in the studio after this uh, tour? I think that they're going to go in in July. Well, you know, I'm pretty busy. I mean, not, that's not even, that's not being anything except honestly, honest, honest, honest. Um, they, you know, Fleetwood Mac has my songs if they want them. They always have had them. Um, if they want me, I'll probably be there. You know, if they make the effort to want me to be there, I'll probably be there. What are you saying to me? If it's good, if it's good, it will be. It always, you know, for Fleetwood Mac, it's like a, like a, an ending tale, you know, old English tale, and it's uh, never seems to ever be finished. Somehow, you know, the love is too strong, I guess, between everybody. I love them, and they love me. And it's hard for us sometimes, because it's been a long, hard road. But we seem to survive, so if the stars are with us, then Fleetwood Mac will go on. But no specific plans right now at all? Well, the plans are specific enough. Uh, they're starting. And that means they're starting. So I'll try to mm -hmm. scramble everything around and fit it back into perspective and get that done, too, probably. You do have a big year coming up. Yeah, that's July. It's right when I should be going. So that's, you know, I really will have to scramble to do it all. Oh, you know, it just occurs to me, I didn't even think of this when we were writing this interview, we haven't talked to you since Christine finally did her own thing. What'd you think? I, I really enjoyed her album. Oh, I liked it a lot. I mean, but I like her, you yeah. know, and I like her music, so. I was proud of her that she finally went and did yeah. her own. Yeah, yeah. I loved her videos. <laughs> I loved her videos were classic. And she is really just that funny, you know, I mean, when the guitar, the burning guitar falls on her piano. She is really, that is really the way that she is. And forever keeps me laughing. Um, is there anything else, because I know you thought about all this because you knew I was coming. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about or hoped I might ask you about? No, I think that you've once again, <laughs> I think you've done a beautiful job. The only thing I want to add to that thing when you asked me about love is that it, if I, I didn't want, I don't want anyone to think that I think it's impossible. I think it is possible. You just have to really look hard. Yeah, that's a good thing to add. I think sometimes people get discouraged. Yeah, and it shouldn't, you shouldn't be discouraged. You should just go on looking. Nice. How do we cover John in the shots of her picture? Do we need any more? Mm. Of the painting? I didn't really get a good look at what.